Hope is a very powerful thing. Without realizing it, we hope for different things all day and every day. We hope for small things. I hope I get to work on time. I hope Starbucks gets my coffee right, because they messed it up last time. I hope I get that job promotion. Sometimes we have to hope for big things. I hope I get married and have a family, or even bigger things. For food, hope for safety, hope for survival. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we think no hope exists. My husband and I are in the business of promoting hope. My husband is a Greek Orthodox priest, and his life's ministry is helping people find hope through faith and prayer. I'm about to be a registered nurse in a year, and nurses have to help their patients and their family members find hope in the most difficult times. Growing up, and even in my adult years, I never found myself in a situation where hope was all I had. I even remember as a child thinking how rare and even odd it was that I never had anything major going on in my life. I just followed the protocol of growing up, getting married, and having kids. And then something very odd happened when I became a parent. I realized that when you become a parent, you realize more and more of all the things that could potentially go wrong with your kids. And you find yourself in a constant state of hope. I hope I have a kid with 10 fingers, 10 toes, healthy kid, no medical problems. I hope I have a happy kid who's smart, who has friends, who's talented, who's not tone deaf and I have a background in music, so having a kid who's not tone deaf is crucial. And I think this process is natural for all parents to go through. It's what keeps us up at night when we have this little baby wrapped up and that only knows how to eat, sleep, pee, and poop. But a few months after our oldest son, Constantine, our healthy baby boy, was born, I found myself worried for him more than the normal worries that parents experience. Not worried like, oh, I hope he grows up and he's okay, yada, yada, but I mean, waking up in the middle of the night, crying uncontrollably for reasons I couldn't explain. Crying as if something awful had already happened to him or was going to happen to him. Like, I woke up crying from a horrible nightmare. I mean, I blamed postpartum hormones, the stress of moving from the city to Queens to Long Island, buying a home, my husband getting a new job, and anything else that I could think of. But in the back of my mind, I felt this odd sadness every time I looked down at his sweet face and his cute little chubby cheeks. And I hoped that what I was feeling would never come true and just remain a horrible thought. Well, five years ago, those horrible thoughts became real. Constantine, who was just shy of six years old, became sick with months of unexplainable nausea, vomiting. He looked and felt miserable all the time he was losing weight, and every doctor attributed the symptoms to different things, and, and none of it made sense. But in my gut, and as a mom, I knew it was something bigger, and it was something worse. And I was right. We finally did a CAT scan of Constantine's head, and the neurosurgeon took me and my husband to a private conference room in the hospital with a slew of other doctors, and they told us we found a sizable brain tumor, and it's cancer. I never felt 
what rock bottom was until that moment. My husband and I felt it so hard. We literally couldn't breathe. When I finally could come up for air, I had to ask the hard question, is my child going to die? And there it was, that instant suspense of wanting an answer that contained a glimmer of hope. Well, we didn't get immediate answers. We were forced to remain in that state of suspense for months. Yes, they got the tumor out. Yes, we had a plan for his treatment. Yes, his prognosis looked pretty good, and time would really tell what his percentages looked like. But the reality is that coming out of that state of suspense, that rock bottom, doesn't happen easily. Our family felt like we were climbing a winding staircase going nowhere. And you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And no matter how hard you try, you're reminded every day that your kid is still so sick. And in my mind, I kept replaying those awful words in my head and still seeing my son. His body was wrecked, like he was dangling by a thread recovering ever so slowly from the aftermath of intense brain surgery. I kept replaying the night they told us his diagnosis in my mind. I couldn't get that room out of my head. In the beginning, I couldn't process anything anyone was telling me. But I remember that room that room was my nightmare come true. And we had to act and pretend as if everything was okay so we could give our son hope, even though the reality was we were hanging on by a thread. What kept us in one piece was our faith in God, a lot of prayer from a lot of people, and something someone said to me. Our faith never left us. I knew from the very beginning that God would watch over my son no matter what the outcome. Either he was going to be healed with us by God's grace, or he was going to go to God and be healed with him. Our Greek Orthodox community came came to our immediate rescue. They prayed with us and for us. They visited us. They gave us their abundant love so freely and unconditionally that it was literally the only thing that got me on my feet every morning and it helped for some time but I couldn't get out from reliving my nightmare. No matter how hard I tried, no matter how positive I tried to be, I was forced every day to go into that hospital and walk past that conference room. That room that I couldn't even look at. A daily reminder that normal was gone. A daily reminder that our son couldn't walk, couldn't talk and was still sick every day. That room caused me to question whether I would ever get my son fully back. Somewhere I had accepted that he would never smile again, never play again, never sing again. And no matter what we did, no matter how hard we tried, he would never fully heal. And hope was harder and harder to come by until one day, my husband and I were paid a visit from a married couple whom we love very dearly and look up to. 
They're the type of people who always have something impactful to say when you're around them. The wife was also a breast cancer survivor, so it meant so much to have her there because she was another survivor in the room, another fighter, another warrior to give our son strength and encouragement. Little did I know, she came for me. Without her knowing it, without her knowing it, she got me out of the void of darkness and sadness and anger that I had been feeling for weeks. When people would come to visit us after Constantine's diagnosis and surgery, my husband and I would have to recount every single detail from the moment of his diagnosis to the present. Because everyone was just as in shock and disbelief as we were. And we were telling this couple everything. And I said to them, we took Constantine for the CT scan. The doctors took us into that room. That awful room that I hate, that I want to burn to the ground. And I told the doctors, I knew it. I knew it for so long. I knew it was so bad, and no one listened to us. And very calmly, the wife said to me, oh, you can't hate that room. That room was the beginning of his healing. Thank God for that room. She said it just like that, like it was nothing, like it was the most easy concept. And I couldn't see it until she said it. From that moment on, I was no longer trapped in that room. And in that void and in that darkness was immediately gone. And slowly but surely, I realized why everything had to happen the way it happened. I truly believe that the sequence of events from even before his diagnosis gave room for the time and space for many miracles to happen. Miracles of his physical recovery. He walked again, he talked again, he played again and smiled again. Miracles of creating and building lasting relationships from even strangers and from people who lifted us up and advocated for us. And most importantly, to see God's work and purpose in everything. He was with us every step of the way. He never left us. From that moment on, I never wanted to reverse time to go back to normal. I want to be here, right here, right now, grateful for every hurdle we had to jump over, and knowing that there's hope for any battle yet to come. When Constantine was diagnosed with cancer five years ago, that room where we were told the news of his diagnosis represented the void of darkness that was about to overtake our lives. That void was unending, and where only hopelessness existed until I changed my perspective and I could see things clearly. Until that moment, I couldn't fully see that not only was that room the beginning of our son's healing, but it was be the beginning of our healing through the transformative power of hope. Hope that was born out of a loving and supportive community and faith. Today, our family can proudly say that Constantine is five years cancer-free. And although we are never certain of the future, we choose to hope, to live by hope, because hope always exists. Thank you so much.